the leader in talk radio on the Internet, right here on K98talk.com. My name is Jesse. I'm a United States Special Forces widow. This gives me a unique perspective on the world around us. If you're willing to listen, I'll tell you how I see it, and I won't pull any punches. This is my POV, which stands for Point of View. All right, thank you very much for listening. I know this is a very new podcast. <clears throat> my name's Jesse. This is my POV, or Point of View. All right, folks, I just want to discuss why I am decided to do this bod- podcast. It is one of those situations where sometimes it takes a tragedy to spur a person into action, encouraging them to speak their mind. As the intro said, I'm a widow of a member of the United States Special Forces. I have a real unique perspective on the world around us. I know what it's like to know where my, not know, to know, have my husband deployed, not knowing where he is or when I'll come home. That knock on the door telling me he's never coming home, something I'll never forget. All right, up front, to protect the ones I love, these perspective stories are being released under a pseudonym. Newsflash, Jesse's not my real name. Not going to tell you where I live or who I know. All right, I've learned by watching and listening to those around me how interconnected things really are. I think this is an important insight to share with the world. I'm also quite the news junkie, always have been. This is my way of sharing my fascination with the news, with the world. Only information that is publicly available will be discussed, primarily from news sources, common, not so common. If you're willing to listen, I'll tell you how I see it. I will occasionally have guests on. Haven't decided who or what yet, but they will be forthcoming. All right. Let's get on to more important topics. Is the United States under attack? Yes. The United States is under constant cyber attack. Cyber attack? Some of you understand it, some of you don't. So to put everybody on the same page, we're going to talk briefly about what is a cyber attack. I have a website, jessiespov.com with a blog post containing links to a lot of the stories I use, not all of them, or you'd be drinking from a fire hose like I was, or trying to anyway, uh, that provides more information. A cyber attack is a deliberate exploitation of computer systems. Cyber attacks use malicious code to alter computer code. This, this can result in disruptive consequences that can compromise data and lead to all kinds of catastrophic consequences. Who would want to do such a thing? Right, we got the what out of the way, now let's get to the who. Lots of people. Governments, industrial spies, terrorists, organized crime, hacktivists, and hackers. Alright, let's get hacktivists out of the way. There are people that will take down a website, maybe people that like hacktivists, anonymous. They have a cause. And they think by taking down the PlayStation Network, they're furthering their cause. I really think they're just, hacktivists just annoy people, but they could go further, but they usually don't. All right. Now, like I said, hacktivists, while they're out there, I think they're more petty and vindictive than anything else. Now let's get on to the big ones. State-sponsored attackers or hackers. China, North Korea, and Iran. That's just a few. Now, I'm also going to include Daesh or ISIS. Daesh is the European term for D-A-E-S-H. Most people here in the United States call it ISIS or ISIL. It's not a state actor. It is one of the largest and most sophisticated terrorist groups to use technology to its advantage. All right. So we've got the the what is and the who out of the way. Now, what do they want? They could want information, money, control, or to cause damage. 
Oh, yeah. They can cause damage with cyber attacks. Everyone can. All right. There are times the mainstream media won't tell you it's an attack. But if you learn to connect the dots, you realize it could be little else. There are hacks or cyber attacks reported at least once a week. OPM. Hospitals. OPM stands for Office of Personnel Management, i.e. government employees. There are co- I mean, These attacks could be corporate or government in, in nature, but they happen. All right, let's go back in time. Yep, jump in this imaginary time machine with me. July 8th, 2015. United Airlines suffered a computer glitch that caused it to ground all of its flights. Now, stopping an entire airline is no small feat. That same day, the New York Stock Exchange had a computer glitch that caused it to suspend trading. Phew. Dodged a bullet. Nope. Wall Street Journal crashed their website. So we have transportation, financial, and media attacked on that one day. Now, now, perso- that's my opinion that it was an attack. There were official statements put out going, no, it's not, no, it's not, no, it's not. I think someone was jiggling the light switch, kind of going, guys, guys, we can get to you. All right. So we, if you can take down transportation, cripple the financial sector, and impair mainstream media in a wider or combined in a wider manner or combine that with other forms of attack that could be ugly really ugly all right just the other day senate homeland security chairman ron johnson stated that he is concerned that the us isn't doing enough to stop these cyber attacks Johnson doesn't feel the threat is being taken seriously by the current administration. So we've got senators speaking out. Now, let's talk about the military. Okay, even the military isn't sure who reacts and how during a massive cyber attack. Wait a minute, you mean our military? Yes, you heard me right. Even the United States military isn't no isn't sure who reacts and how during a massive cyber attack on domestic targets. Now, in in their defense, there are a number of issues that complicate the possible chain of command series. But, just like the problems with the communication between first responders on 9-11 needs to be fixed. ASAP. Yesterday? I hope current Secretary of Defense Ash Carter is making this a priority to get it straightened out. Okay, now, let's talk about one more military issue. Trident Missile System. That's a nuclear missile, folks. The military is having is beefing up security around systems, especially those. Just imagine the devastation if ISIS was able to hack into even just one of these missiles and launch it. Yeah, our own nuclear weapons turned against us by a terrorist organization. Or even Iran. Or North Korea. God, they're always... Iran and North Korea are always going, they're going to wipe us off the map. If you haven't been paying attention, they've been saber rattling. North Korea in particular has been saber rattling rattling for the last month. They kind of do this every year because of exercises on the peninsula. But they've been a little more vocal this year than usual. All right, I digress. Let's get back to the military. The U.S. military currently has 100 cyber warfare teams, and they do both offensive and defense op- defensive operations. You go, yay! Wait, not so fast. On the ground, in the air, conventional war, we're bigger, we're stronger, and in a lot of cases tougher than any of our top attackers. Cyber sa- space... Great equalizer. The gaps between our strengths and our weaknesses and their strengths and their weaknesses, they're much narrower 
You heard me. Much narrower. Okay, so we've got back. Let's go back to the who. We discussed the military response. It's kind of a shoulder shrug. I don't know. Who do you call? I don't know. Who do you call? Yeah, this needs to be fixed. All right. Let's talk about what hackers want. Let's ta take two of the, these things. They want information. What if they could hack into military databases? And they could see the information we are using to plan special forces, covert, covert special forces attacks. Next step, what if they could alter it so that our military commanders can't even believe the information in their own reports? How much damage could that cause? They could set a trap. Oh yeah. Special Forces Widow card coming out here? I don't even want to think about it. I don't even want to think about the carnage that can cause. Alright, now. Uh, in the case of a recent hospital attack. That, they wanted money. They wanted to be paid off to basically give the hospital back its computer systems. Yeah, they hacked a number of computer. They hacked, took down the entire hospital. They pr potentially could have act. The, uh, they shut down the CT scans because remember CT scans, X-rays, all those tests. They don't put them on a film anymore. They put them on a computer. On a hard drive. If you had a broken leg and were at that hospital, you couldn't get an x-ray. Hospital paid them off just because they wanted to get their system back up as fast as possible. Can't say whether I agree or disagree. Not sure I wasn't in their shoes. Wouldn't want to be either. But that's one form of attack. All right. Now. Let's go back to our state sponsors of cyber warfare. Remember Russia, China? They were both on this list. Last May, they signed an agreement not to attack each other. Yeah, you heard me. They signed an agreement not to attack each other. This means that two of the world's best cyber warfare people are now in an alliance against us. Now, side note here, China props up its puppet, North Korea. Who's been yelling and screaming lately? We're going to nuke America. We're going to nuke America. All right. I could go on about the North Korea nuclear missile program, but I'm going to save that for another episode. Promise. It's the next one on my list, actually. That and uh, just while I'm promoing future stuff. I'm going to do a terrorist 101. Who are they? Why don't why don't they get along with the West and how did all this conflict start? Yeah. Those are the next two podcasts I'm going to be working on. Get them done as fast as I can. All right. Now back to back to who wants to attack, attack us. Remember Iran? Why would they want to attack us? Didn't we just sign a major deal with them? Yeah, we did. Uh, personally, I don't think Iran has any intention of honoring that deal. The deal was over their nuclear weapons program. This deal listed mo also lifted most of the sanctions that were in place to keep the Western world from trading with this country. Those sanctions are gone. Air France just announced three flights a week to Tehran. Now, time out. You may or may not be up on your global politics. Most of you listeners to K98 probably are, but we're going to say, just put everybody here on a level playing field. We haven't had formal diplomatic relations with Iran since 1980. There was this thing in 1979 called the Iran hostage crisis. They held a whole bunch of Americans prisoner for over a year. Okay, yes. 
So we don't even have diplomat, formal diplomatic relations with the country. We just signed an agreement that they wouldn't make nuclear weapons for a decade. And poof, all their sanctions went away. Doesn't sound like a good thing to me. Then, you want the cherry on top? President Obama gave them money. Wait, 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 wait. We gave them money to sign a deal that they wouldn't pursue nuclear weapons and we'd take away their sanctions for a dec. The sanctions are gone permanently. You can't pursue a nuclear weapon for a decade. And we're going to pay you to do this? Time out. Time out. Flag on the field. Does this sound like a good idea to anybody? I know it doesn't to me. I think I smell another podcast in the future. All right. Back to cyber attacks. I'm trying to stay on topic here. I really am. All right. Iran wants information. They have been cut off from the world. Their technology, their industries, they're, they're largely behind those of the Western world. Some of their targets, not all of them, are aimed at corporations. Iran just... March 24th of this year was charged with cyber attacks on on U.S. banks. Seven, I'm quoting an uh, NBC News article, the link's in the blog post at jessiespov.com. Seven Iranian computer experts linked to the government in Tehran were charged Thursday with cyber attacks against American banks and a dam in New York. A dam. That's infrastructure. Remember Ron Johnson, chairman of the Senate uh, Homeland Security Committee, said this isn't being taken seriously? I don't think it is. Now, don't expect to see him on trial anytime soon. FBI Director James Coney said the suspects may be out of reach while they're in Iran. But, if they ever travel, we're going to try and extradite them from wherever they go, providing they go somewhere we have an extradition treaty. If we know they're there. And I will say, that's one thing the United States is good at. Our memory is long. Now, this attack, there were 46 major financial institutions targeted with denial of service attacks. Hackers gained remote control of hundreds of computers and servers. They used them to flood a target server data so it can't deal with regular business. Yeah. Some of their targets, Bank of America, you ever hear of them? Yeah, I know. I think half of the country banks with them. New York Stock Exchange, wait a minute. April, or no, excuse me, not April. July, July 8th, 2015, New York Stock Exchange. Now you see why I say it was an attack? Even though the official report said, nope, 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 no attack. Uh, Capital One, ever hear of them? ING, lesser but well-known investment firm. PNC Bank. Yeah, PNC Bank. And these were organized, systematic, relentless attacks. And that's according to uh, Attorney General Loretta Lynch. Now, on the dam, we got lucky. The Bowman Dam in Rye, New York. It's in the su- it's in the suburbs of New York. Because of maintenance, 
the dam wasn't connected to the computer system. Now, what can you do when you can control a dam? How about open it wide and cause a flood? Remember the flooding a few years ago in the Midwest? Remember what happened? Uh, Hurricane Katrina? Flooding? Major loss of American life. So, cyber attacks. They real? Oh yeah. They're real, and they're out there. All right. Enough of the bad news. I like to end every podcast and every day on something positive. So we are going to talk about a Marine. Not just any Marine, mind you. This Marine has four paws and goes woof, woof. Yep, I'm discussing a dog. A dog named Luca. She successfully completed 400 missions. Yeah, you heard me. 400 missions and protected the lives of thousands of troops during her six years. Yes, six years of service in the Marines. Now, just because this, you say, well, the dog's not really a Marine. Oh, yes, she is a Marine. Don't even get me started on animals that wear the uniform. They exist. She was recently honored with the highest honor animals can receive for military service. So. And that medal is the PDSA Dickin Medal, the animal equivalent of the United Kingdom's Victoria Cross. This is the highest honor animals can receive for military service. And Luca, she's groundbreaking. She's the first United States Marine Corps dog to receive the medal. Now, she is retired. She even lost a limb. So she is a a wounded warrior. Yes, Luca is a wounded warrior. So. So she is happily retired with Gunnery Sergeant Chris, Chris Willingham in California. So they've got some really adorable pictures of her up on the website, even a little video. So if you want to check it out, I encourage you. It's a great, uplifting story. Now, thank you all for listening. I know it's my first podcast. Hope to have you back again soon. What I'd like to say is a special thanks to Rick Robinson at K98 Talk. And don't forget to check out his amazing podcast, America Off the Rails. He's an inspiration. All right. My next one, I promise, will delve into North Korea and their nuclear threats. And then I'll get to that Terrorist 101. So just to make sure everybody's on the same playing field, because there's going to be a lot of things coming down the pike. So I'm going to refer back to it. So it might be a good idea to check it out. All right. You guys, take care. Have a great day. And like I said, end, end every day on a positive note. This is Slickery Trigger for Rebel Road Tactical. With proper care and feeding, your pistol will be ready when you need it. There to save your life. Shouldn't your gear be that good? Whether you need a holster for comfortable, everyday carry, or a tough-as-nails holster for your next training course, Rebel Road Tactical has what you need. Check us out on the web at rebelroadtactical.com. The leader in talk radio on the Internet, right here on K98talk.com.
the leader in talk radio on the Internet, right here on K98talk.com. If you want to work until you keel over, have less of everything in retirement, or give back more of your hard-earned money to the stock market again, then just ignore me. But if you'd like to protect the money you save, receive a steady, predictable retirement income, and enjoy financial security for as long as you live, then listen to this. You can download a free report that reveals the wealth-building secrets Wall Street and the banks don't want you to know. You'll learn how you can get guaranteed growth, safety, and real prosperity without risking your money in the Wall Street Casino and how to get the money you need when you need it simply by asking for it. This is the best way to have a 100% secure retirement and know your money will last as long as you do. To learn more about this method and to get your free report, go to 29security.com. That's the number 29security.com. 29security.com. Go to 29security.com. This is Slickery Trigger from Rebel Road Tactical. With proper care and feeding, your pistol will be ready when you need it. There to save your life. Shouldn't your gear be that good? Whether you need a holster for comfortable, everyday carry, or a tough-as-nails holster for your next training course, Rebel Road Tactical has what you need. Check us out on the web at rebelroadtactical.com. Tired of paying outrageous prices for Viagra? Well, we have great news for you. Now you can finally get Viagra at huge discounts. Healthy Man allows you to save up to $500 on Viagra. Why pay U.S. pharmacy prices of $15 per pill or more when you can get Viagra for less than $3 a pill? Call today and get 40 Viagra pills for only $99. This can cost as much as $600 at your local pharmacy. You can't afford not to call us. If you want Viagra at the lowest prices, never pay $15 a pill pharmacy prices again. Get Viagra for less than $3 a pill. Call 1-800-516-7602 today and save up to $500 and get 40 pills for just $99. Healthy Man is fast, easy, and affordable. Operators are waiting at 1-800-516-7602 to take your call right now. Call 1-800-516-7602. That's 1-800-516-7602. Again, 1-800-516-7602. In these uncertain economic times, you've got to do whatever you can to save money. One of our biggest expenses can be our cars, especially when unexpected repair bills hit. Not anymore. If you own a vehicle with less than 130,000 miles, is less than 12 years old, has a warranty about to expire, or even no warranty at all, you could stop paying for car repairs. Roadside assistance, towing, and rental coverage are all included. Don't wait for the next repair. Make one free call right now to see if you qualify. If your vehicle vehicle is less than 12 years old, has less than 130,000 miles, even if it's out of warranty, paying for car repairs can become a thing of the past. Call us right now and get your car protected before your next repair bill hits. Get protection and no more repair bills. Call 800-696-1030. Again, 800-696-1030. That's 800-696-1030. 800-696-1030. All right, folks, this is Rick Robinson with you. I want to tell you about some friends of mine from a company called Security Enforcement Specialists. When I ran my security agency for 12 years, I worked with one of these partners on a daily basis. He's been involved in this agency now, and with his other partner, they do have over 30 years of experience in the private security industry. If you own a business and you need someone to keep you or your customers or residents safe, then I highly recommend contacting Security Enforcement Specialists today. Give them a call at 405-703-1796. Again, that's 405-703-1796. Again, tell them Rick from K98 Talk sent you. Like I said, if you need the help, they are here for you. So make sure that you uh, go look them up, check them out, and see what they can do. The wrong way. Welcome to the place. Welcome to the place. 
Joe had huge problems with the IRS. I knew it was coming. I hadn't filed taxes since 1990. All the IRS letters coming in added up to a nightmare. It got up to like $68,000. My heart started beating fast. It's like, there's no way, man. I mean, I ain't going to be able to do this. Then they stopped his paycheck. So that's when I started making phone calls and found U.S. Tax Shield. U.S. Tax Shield went to work immediately. They just took the bull by the horns. What blew my mind is he called the IRS right then and there. So why is U.S. Tax Tax Shield A plus rated with the Better Business Bureau? Joe knows. They saved me a ridiculous amount of money. If you owe more than ten thousand dollars to the IRS or state, choose the company Joe chose. U.S. Tax Shield. It was the best decision I made. U.S. Tax Shield is the way to go. Life is good. Thank you, Laura. <laughs> Call 800-471-3287. U.S. Tax Shield. Boo raw. Yes. <laughs> The Internet will never be the same. You're listening to K98talk.com. The leader in talk radio on the Internet, right here on K98talk.com. My name is Jesse. I'm a United States Special Forces widow. This gives me a unique perspective on the world around us. If you're willing to listen, I'll tell you how I see it, and I won't for any countries. This is my POV, which stands for Point of View. Hi, Jesse here. I really wasn't planning on recording tonight, but... My friend Rick told me his throat is so sore and he cannot be with you tonight. Hope you feel better, Rick. Rest that voice up. I know we're all going to miss you if you're not on. So he asked me if I could quickly pull together that North Korean segment I'd talked about. So, and if you have, today is April 8th, 2016. 13 North Korean restaurant workers defected so yes we've been doc- I, I told, promised you I was going to do something on North Korea there were 13 workers that defected they were working in a restaurant now North Korea only has restaurants in a couple of countries uh, off the top of my head I remember China and Cambodia they have not released what restaurant the workers were at when they defected Uh, Also in the news today, North Korea says it has successfully tested a long-range rocket engine. Yes. Now, let's talk about North Korea. Where did this crazy country come from? All right. Now, first of all, officially, it is not North Korea. It is the Democratic People's Republic of Korea. All right. Yeah. Interesting. I know. Democratic People's Republic. Why does it always seem that countries that put Democratic Republic or Democratic at the front aren't? All right. Now, another really interesting thing. Whatever time it is in Seoul, the capital of South Korea, Pyongyang, Pyongyang, excuse me for my pronunciation, is in half half an hour behind it. They literally set themselves in a separate time zone for the sole purpose of being different from South Korea. Oh yeah. If that isn't taking things to an extreme, don't know what is. Really don't. So if it's 11 a.m. in Seoul, it is 10.30 in Pyongyang, which is just north of it. It's not very far east or west. It's pretty much straight north. All right. Now, let's get back to North Korea. A little bit more about North Korea. How did this country come to exist? All right. Uh, Basically, after World War II, you know, Japan had occupied it for a while. World War II, Japan, we all know Japan surrendered. 
Korea was divided into two zones the, by the United States and the Soviet Union. No surprise. Here we go. Remember, East, West Germany, North, South Korea. Yeah. All right. And negotiations, reunification failed. So in 1948, two separate governments were formed. The DPRK, or AKA North Korea, and the Republic of Korea in the South. Uh, and a couple years later, there was the Korean War, 1950 to 1953. All right. Technically, technically, they are under a ceasefire. There is no official peace treaty. Both of these countries are still technically at war. So that's why kind of tensions run kind of high. So you'll find things like the North shooting rockets off, the South blaring propaganda from loudspeakers, because... The DMZ, also known as the Demilitarized Zone, which divides them, both the North and the South have a city inside the DMZ. Now, you can actually visit the DMZ on special tours. Uh... And see this. It's really actually kind of interesting. But it's one of those things of... It's definitely an interesting thing. I mean, it really is. You can literally see where the exact border is, and you can walk inside the military armistice. Uh, I think it's, it's the MAC Commission building. I'm trying to remember. I think it's the Military Armistice Commission building. I am looking up the acronym as we speak. Um, where, that's where they, they hold their talks. So... Yes, I have visited the DMZ. If I seem to know too much, I have been there. Yes, you can go on tours. There are both North, uh, U.S. and South Korean troops on our side of the DMZ. So, and like I said, I have actually been there. Now, I don't rem recommend I don't me recommend trying to cross it. I don't recommend anything like that. That would just be nuts. But it is an interesting place to visit. You can actually see the buildings. All right, give me just one moment while I pull up this article I'm looking for. All right, thank you for your patience. I was able to pull up that article. All right, some interesting things about the DMZ. Both North and South Korea maintain villages in sight of each other on opposing sides of the DMZ. And the reason these are there, at least from what I was told and what I've been able to find, is that South Korea already had one in there when it happened, and so therefore the North had to have one too. Now, uh, I will say there's some interesting things in there. In, in the 1980s, South Korea built a flagpole up at and I'm probably going to mispronounce this, Daesangdang, which flies a South Korean flag. And they built it 323 feet in the air and put it up there. And this had something to do with the Olympics and everything like that. All right. North couldn't be outdone. So they had to put up the world's fourth largest flagpole. And I'm probably going to mispronounce this one, but I'm going to do my best. Ki Jong Dong. And it is, I'm looking for the height, 541 feet tall. Yes, you heard that. Now, how big of flags do you need to fly on these things? The South Korean flag weighs 130 kilograms or 287 pounds. Yeah, they put a 287-pound flag on a 323-foot-tall flagpole. Oh, yeah. 
All right. So the North Koreans couldn't couldn't be outdone. So they built a 525 foot flagpole and put a 595 pound flag on its side. I just wish they'd stuck stuck to flagpole wars. All right, if you're there, and they have both sides have loudspeakers there. We're we're not just talking bullhorn size thing. We're talking massive banks of loudspeakers. And from 53, 1953 until 2004, both sides would broadcast their propaganda. So, yeah. So, and they, for the most part, they don't do these broadcasts anymore, but they do turn them back on and off when somebody, either side, can get upset. All right. Do you think the North and South can ever cooperate? Well, they kind of already do. There's this thing called the Kaesong Industrial Complex. Yeah, Kaesong Industrial Complex. All right, there are, last I knew, 123 company, companies there. South Korean companies. And it's a very special zone. It's in North Korea, but it's right near the DMZ. It's 10 kilometers or 6 miles north of the, D- the DMZ. And it's only an hour from Seoul. Direct road, direct rail. So, it's a project of cooperation. Now, whether it's open or not, that's always one of those things. Depends on the day, the week, and whose feathers were ruffled and if they've decided to ignore it and let it go. All right. So, what's so special about this? It's the South Korean companies getting the chief North Korean... North Korean labor. Uh, And what's North Korea get? Foreign currency. We're talking a country that is essentially pretty much blackballed from most trading. Sometimes it's called the Hermit Kingdom. So, and now in uh, in 2016, it was quote unquote temporarily closed by the South. The South said, nope, we're closing it for now. And they claimed the the South's reason for closing it was North Korea quote-unquote launched a satellite bomb and claimed they tested a hydrogen bomb in January. And the next day, North Korea goes, well, fine, we're kicking out all South Korean workers and we'll freeze everything at the factory. You can't have it. So, thankfully, there were 280 South Korean workers at Kaesong. They heard this going. They said, we're out of here. They didn't wait. So, I mean, it's been open. It's been closed. It's been open. It's been closed. Last I heard, it was closed. But it was uh, it was a neat thing. I mean, it just shows that the two Koreas can... cooperate. Oh, and by the way, uh, the electricity and the water that went to the Kaesong Industrial Complex was supplied by the South. Any sign of lights or steam or smoke coming out of a building in North Korea generally means it's active. So, that's what makes another thing that happened recently and give, be patient with me while I pull up this article. All right, I got, I, got, I got the article. And this is from the Daily Mail, which is a UK news company. I will get the blog post that I'd like to do associated with this up. But I couldn't write the blog post and pull these articles as on, in 20 minutes. When I write something, i got to sit on it and read it over later. So I can talk without having to do too much editing, 
but writing I take takes me a little bit longer. All right. There is a North Korea does have nuclear power plants. All right. And there hasn't been much activity there. However, past couple weeks, past five weeks to be exact, there have been exhaust plumes from the thermal plant at Yang Yang's radiochemical laboratory site. It's a main it's North Korea's main reprocessing installation to produce plutonium. Oh yeah. So, yes, North Korea does have nuclear facilities. How they got them, I can probably tell you, but it probably bore you. Let's just say they have it. Um, by the way, North Korea is also in bed with Iran. I will pull up the information on that in just a minute. Uh, now, January 6th, North Korea... Yes, the January 6, 2016, North Korea did a, did a new, uh, claimed it would conduct its fourth nuclear test. A month later, they quote unquote launched a satellite into space. Well, everybody who watches space said that satellite went up and immediately just could not sustain orbit. It began tumbling around. In other words, the satellite was doing absolutely nothing. Everyone says, and I agree. The satellite launch was cover for an intercontinental ballistic missile, ICBM for short, test. All right. So now that we got that straight, we have North Korea who can at least get a rocket up. Can they get it down where they want or guide it? We don't know. But they can get a, a rocket up. Hey, that that in my mind, you're halfway there. All right. So, we've got rockets going up. We've got North Korea having a plutonium, you know, processing plutonium, or making plutonium, or however they go about getting the stuff ready to put on a warhead. All right. That enough to scare you yet? I know it doesn't make me happy. All right. Let's go for one more. All right. So, we've got... Let's review. We've got North Korea that can get a long range, the equivalent of an intercontinental ballistic missile, up. Can they direct it or get it back down where they want? That remains to be seen. We know they've test, successfully tested an engine for an ICBM. All right, they know how to launch a rocket. They know they've got a uh, basically an ICBM for design, and we know they can get the rocket up. Okay, now... And this just came out April 5th, 2016. And again, I'm using a Daily Mail, ar Mail news article. I'll get all these links into a blog post as fast as I can at jessiespov.com. North Korea, and this is according to South Korea and several other sources. North Korea is capable of launching a medium range nuclear missile. That gives it about uh, 1,250 miles. So Taiwan parts of Russia, and of course, South Korea. Yeah, hello. So, if you take North Korea, draw 200, you know, 1,250 mile circle around it, you cover quite a bit of territory. In fact, I will upload the video, photo of this as the uh, photo to go with this podcast so you can see it. It's pretty scary. Now, this means what this means, other than the fact of, oh my goodness, uh oh, ruh -ruh, George, is that North Korea has figured out how to miniaturize a nuclear warhead, at least to a point. Because, okay, you can make a nuclear device, but when you're not experienced at it, you make it way bigger than will ever fit on a rocket. All right. Medium range missiles like the Rongdong, you can make it a little bit bigger. You have to make it smaller than what you first did. But it doesn't have to be as tiny as it would for an intercontinental ballistic missile. 
This has to do with payload, capacity, distance it has to travel. I did some research on it. It would bore you to tears. I know it did me. But basically, the size has to be smaller so the rocket can carry it further. That's the real short variation on all this. So, even though North Korea has been spouting off like crazy that they're going to strike the United States with the ICBM, an intercontinental ballistic missile, they don't have that technology yet. Yet. Now, here's the other thing. Iran and North Korea. Yeah, remember I mentioned Iran in my last podcast? North Korea? Yeah, those two countries? They've teamed up. You heard me. They've teamed up. Okay, I'm going to repeat this again. Iran and North Korea have teamed up in terms of ballistic missile and nuclear technology. Does that scare anybody? And this is from Congressional Research Service. They're not known for garbage. But yeah. They have teamed up. Now, give me a second, and I'll get you a couple of excerpts from this. And I will post links to all this at jessiespov.com. So if you don't believe me, you can see it all for yourselves. Okay, thank you for your patience while I pulled that up. And this is a quote, like I said, I quote-unquote, ballistic missile cooperation. Iran has developed a close working relationship with North Korea on many ballistic missile programs, starting with the acquisition of SCUD missiles from North Korea in the 1980s. In the mid-1980s, North Korea developed a 300-kilometer range SCUD-B ballistic missile from prototypes obtained from Egypt. What? I just brought in another country. We'll get to that another time. And subsequently began to export them. Pyongyang developed the 500-kilometer range Scud-C in 1991. North Korea has sold both missile types, as well as middle missile production technology to several countries in the Middle East. We're we'll definitely have to get to that Terrorism 101 series, including Iran and Syria. Wait a minute. Do the words Iran and Syria mean anything to anybody? ISIS or Daesh, take your pick, Syria. In 1992, then director of the director of the Central Intelligence Agency, Robert Gates identified Iran, Iran and Syria as recipients of North Korean scud missiles. In 1993, DCI, Director of the Central Intelligence Agency, James Woolsey, provided more detail, saying that North Korea had sold Sir Syria and Iran extended-range SCUD-C missiles and apparently agreed to sell them other forms of n missile technology. All right, now we get to our lovely friends, the Russians. A Russian intelligent report, which the U.S. deemed credible, Say that Iran's missile potential during this period was confined to SCUD B SRBMs received from Syria and North Korea. However, during the 1990s, the continued annual, annual threat assessments weren't so sure. All right, in 2006, we're playing fast forward, we're out of the 80s and 90s. 2006, Iran publicly acknowledged for the first time it had obtained missiles from North Korea. Yeah, Iran, North Korea, missiles, and nuclear technology. Right. I don't know about you. I don't like any of it. We just signed a deal with Iran saying, you guys can't research it. We never said you couldn't buy it. We lifted sanctions, remember? And now we've got North Korea suddenly starting their plutonium processing plant up again. Oh, boy. 
I hope I don't see any mushroom clouds anytime in the future. All right, give me a minute. I want to tell you about one more story, and then I will let you go. As you know, I like to train everything on a positive note. Well, I couldn't do too positive and talk about North Korea other than I'm grateful 13 people defected. But I do have something I find kind of funny, all right, about North Korea. All right, we are going back to 1976, August 18th. All right, 1976, guard houses at the DMZ actually used binoculars and watched each other. Well, there was this tree that had grown up so that Station 1 and Station 2 had couldn't see each other. So, the United States told North Korea, hey, we're going to go trim this tree. So, North Korea, some North Korean soldiers just got the bright idea to literally, <coughs> excuse me, murder two American military off, army officers with axes. Yes, it's called the axe murder incident. All right. Well, three days later, the United States said, "Uh uh-uh, we're taking that tree out. So they launched something that has come to be known as Operation Paul Bunyan. All right, this is the most expensive tree trimming in history. I'm sure of it. I don't have the numbers. Where do you hear about hear this one? In response to the axe, axe murder in, incident, it was deemed that the tree had to come down. So, Operation Paul Bunyan was carried out August 21st at 7 a.m. A convoy of 23 American and South Korean vehicles drove into the joint secure area, the DMZ, with, with no warning. In the vehicles, there were two eight-man teams of military engineers equipped with chainsaws. All right, tree gone. Meantime, the entire peninsula was on ready alert, and there were over flights of helicopters, Cobra gunships, B-52 strat- stratofortresses, and F-4 Phantoms. I mean, come on. I have never heard of a more expensive tree trimming than bringing out the entire military in the area. We're talking, you know, USS Midway was off for, off offshore. B-52 Stratofortresses, F-4 Phantoms, F-5 and F-86 fighters. And an entire peninsula on ready alert to cut down a tree. I will say, Operation Paul Bunyan makes a great story, and I'm kind of glad the tree's gone. I'm sorry the officers had to die. All right, remember, end the day on a positive note. Take care. Until next time, I'll check my blog site, jessiespov.com. I will get all this put into writing and get it up there as soon as I can. All right. Bye. The leader in talk radio on the internet, right here on K98talk.com. If you want to work until you keel over, have less of everything in retirement, or give back more of your hard-earned money to the stock market again, then just ignore me. But if you'd like to protect the money you save, receive a steady, predictable retirement income, and enjoy financial security for as long as you live, then listen to this. You can download a free report that reveals the wealth-building secrets Wall Street and the banks don't want you to know. You'll learn how you can get guaranteed growth, safety, and real prosperity without risking your money in the Wall Street Casino and how to get the money you need when you need it simply by asking for it. This is the best way to have a 100% secure retirement and know your money will last as long as you do. To learn more about this method and to get your free report, go to 29security.com. That's the number 29security.com. 29security.com. Go to 29security.com. 